Hey guys, welcome back to another Cheap Pep video. Today we're going to mount a rear cylinder. So I died quite a lot this week. Uh, I was busy with cylinders and pistons. Um, with the Firago you have to start with the rear cylinder. And the funny thing is they have numbers. So we have a number one cylinder and a number two cylinder. And everything that you do has to start with the number one cylinder. Um, now if you mount or dismount your engine, it's good that you mark all the pieces. Normally I talk, uh, I talk about the, um, the shaft side and the front side. And the shaft side is obviously the rear side. Uh, Yamaha calls this uh, cylinder number one. And if you have a really close look at your engine, you find the numbers uh, actually there. Uh, I've made this video and uh, I'll show you right now so you can see that there is a number one and a number two uh, on your engine as well uh, as your camshaft. Your camshafts also have a, um, a number one and a number two so you know which one goes front and which one goes rear. Now, to be honest I don't have the feeling there is a lot of difference between these two uh, but since they also if you uh, would like to order these parts make a difference uh, in a number one and a number two then there obviously are differences if you have uh, your rocker arms for instance they all are the same even front and rear or which cylinder whatever they all are the same and the same goes with your cylinder heads and your, uh, and your pistons, they also don't have a front and a rear. Still, the cylinder head has a marking in the front uh, which has a number one and a number two. So this is also something that you can remember then which one goes front us is the front and which one is the back. Um, so I have to be honest, I made a mistake uh, during uh, the build. Uh, I was just starting with the cylinder head and I thought like, okay, I don't care which one I'm gonna start with. And then I thought, oh no, uh, this is a number one cylinder head, uh, number two cylinder head, and I had to start with the number one cylinder head. Still, it doesn't matter, I have to make them both anyway, so, uh, but that lost me some time, otherwise I would have uh, fixed this one earlier. So, let's have a look at first installing piston rings. Normally, you polish the inside of your cylinder with a hone tool. I have a lot of special tools in my garage, but a hone tool I don't. Hone tools are really, really expensive. And since these cylinders look like new from the inside and we're not building a MotoGP bike here, my trusty old polished grease will do the job just perfect. Of course, I do install new piston rings. I polish all moving parts like these with my polish grease. This makes the surface nice and smooth, and after giving it a good coat of engine oil, everything will run smooth again. Here I undo my piston from the old piston rings and inspect them for whatever reason. Then I clean my piston really intensively and polish it, especially the ring groove. Also install a new gasket. Piston rings have an up and a downside. That is, the top and second compression ring do. They have marks on them, usually a dot or a letter like R. You can also fill a little taper. The taper scrapes the oil. The two oil rings have no up or downside.
It's important you oil the grooves with clean engine oil before installing them. You want everything to be lubricated before permanently installing. Always work your way from bottom to top when you install the piston rings. This works easier. Some people find this strange, but with the Virago engines I like to first install the piston in the cylinder and connect it while it's on the engine. Normal cylinders have recesses which give you the ability to pressure piston rings so the piston pops in easily. The Furago doesn't. This makes it harder to place in the piston without damaging the piston rings. I usually use my clamping strap to install pistons, but this had its best time I found out. So I had to do it the old trusty manual way. Putting in the seam clips which keep the piston rods at their place always is a really patient job. And you might think, why do you do it this way? But with the connecting rod already halfway in the cylinder, it makes it easier for me. Always protect the inners of the engine, for instance with a cloth, in case you lose your EC clip. So now that the piston rings are in, you can uh, mount your uh, lower, um, lower cylinder and then you go to the top end. Um, my number two uh, top end uh, cylinder head went pretty easy. First, I needed to undo the cylinder from bended studs. I once bought this file to repair damaged screw threads. It's an unbelievable helpful tool. I first try to unscrew the studs with two nuts without heating the cylinder head. No chance. If you really heat up the cylinder, this will work. The aluminum expands faster than the steel and this helps loosen the studs. Here I ready the valves. I take off the old coal and I polish the studs and edge of the valve with 2000 grit sanding paper. Then I use special grinding stuff for valves in two grids. And I have the suction caps to grind in the valves so they fit like new in their housing. There's a special way to do so by listening carefully if the grinding is enough. If you hear a real smooth sound, then you are finished grinding. Listen.
Then it was time for the camshaft rocker arms and new valve seals. As told earlier, there is no difference in rocker arms front or back or cylinder 1 or cylinder 2. First lay in your rocker arm. Then install the compression springs. Then connect the rocker shaft. These are sometimes hard to install because your rocker arms need to be aligned precisely. Always check if the rocker arms run smooth and free when finishing this job. Then you install the valves with a valve spring compressor. I modified mine by making a small groove so I can place it over the rocker arm. Then you need to puzzle with the valve cutters. I always use tweezers for this. This never goes in one time, so you need to be patient. Since we have the cylinder heads like this, why not adjust the valve clearance right away? I use a clearance of 0.10mm on the intake side and 0.15mm on the exhaust side. The distance between the valve and the valve adjuster is right when your feeler gouge has a little bit of resistance. Double check this several times. Now I had finished that one and then I started with my number one cylinder head. The rocker shafts gave me some problems and normally I am used to these rocker shafts that don't go in easy. Uh, norm Sometimes I use my uh, press to install them, but you rather not because your rocker arms are um, really fragile and you don't want to press them in too hard. So I gave it the old method with heating up uh, my aluminum, uh, which uh, really expands the hole where, which, where this um, shaft has to go in. Uh, and obviously that when the shafts went in my fridge, uh, as, you, as you know, I use my kitchen a lot. Um, so the, I put in the shafts in the fridge, heated up the engine heads and then it's way easier to do your job and you just tap them in. So as you can see, uh, I'm finished with that now. Um, unfortunately, I, I can't really start yet with my front cylinder. Why? Because the small colors I need inside there, um, oh, I, I miss one color. So I have to have that color in before I can install the rest. So I have to use my uh, spare engine and, and I have to lift off the, the cylinder of my spare engine and then uh, I can continue with the front cylinder, number two. 
for the rest, uh, I really had to scavenge a lot, uh, I noticed, because um, I figured, oh yeah, um, I sold parts of uh, one of my engine uh, to this guy who's making a unbelievable bike. I don't know what he's gonna do, but he's gonna make a chain drive out of a shaft drive bike, uh, which is great, but I've sold him uh, some stuff and I am now at that point that I've got my parts everywhere. Uh, of leftovers, uh, 700cc, old 750s, uh, so I noticed that I have to scavenge a lot uh, of my stuff from all the crates that I have. I have to be honest, it's kind of funny to do and it's kind of nice to do. It's like I'm having my own junkyard and I'm just searching in my old junkyard and uh, looking for the parts that I need and I constantly find them. The only thing I don't find is that color and probably I sold the engine uh, halves with one of these colors in and this is why I can't find it. I have to be honest I also threw away two 700 old uh, cylinders which were completely worn and I, I just had to throw them away because they needed more space and I threw uh, away other stuff as well. So probably one color is still in there. Uh, but no worries I've got four colors left in my, um, in my engine which I have. So, uh, but I, uh, the, uh, the, the down part is that I have to lift that cylinder to take it out. out. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, we are on a holiday coming up. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do a lot in the holiday on my engine, I don't know. So, if I will skip one week, um, of, um, of uh, working on my bike, uh, excuse me for that. But I also need a break sometimes, and if not, then this message was for nothing. Uh, still, thank you for watching. Please leave all your comments or your questions or whatever you want in the comment section below. You can always email me as well. You can find me, I also have this vague website where you can find all my uh, addresses and uh, contact um, uh, information. So if you need something or if you want to question something or just leave something, uh, in uh, in a text box or whatever and uh, do that because it's no problem at all and I like all your questions so um, Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye